chapter 5, beginning at verse 1, later on, there was a Jewish feast for which Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there in Jerusalem, a pool near the Sheep Gate. This pool in the Hebrew is called Bethesda, having five porches or alcoves or colonnades or doorways, whatever you prefer. In these lay a great number of sick folk, some blind, some crippled, and some paralyzed or shriveled up, waiting for the bubbling up of the water. There was a certain man there who had suffered with a deep-seated and lingering disorder for 38 years. When Jesus noticed him lying there helpless, knowing that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, Do you want to become well? Or are you really in earnest about getting well? The invalid answered. Now notice his answer, because he didn't directly answer Jesus' question. Yeah, right, right. Sir, I have nobody when the water is moving to put me into the pool, into the pool. But while I am trying to come myself, somebody else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your bed or sleeping pad or mattress or whatever it is and walk. Instantly, the man became well and recovered his strength, picked up his bed and walked. The problem is that this happened on the Sabbath. So the Jews kept saying to the man that had been healed now, is it lawful? Mm. It is the Sabbath, and you have no right to pick up your bed. It is not lawful. But this man just got healed. He answered them, The man who healed me and gave me back my strength, he himself said to me, Pick up your bed and walk. So they asked him, Who is this man who told you Pick up your bed and walk. We have just three more passages. Now the invalid who, invalid who had healed, who had been healed, did not know who it was, for Jesus had quietly gone away. How could he not know who it was? We'll talk about that in a minute. Had passed on unnoticed since there was a crowd in the place. Afterward, when Jesus found him in the temple, he said to him, See, you are well. Yes. Stop sinning. Stop sinning, which implies that he had been sinning. Stop sinning, or the consequence is something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Yes, one of these days, you know that I'm gonna sing and navigate time. 
and it's functioning like an emergency room at Cook County Hospital. The problem is that there are folk at this church that have been coming here for so long that they've learned to become functional in dysfunction. They've learned to be comfortable in unhealthiness. They've adapted and adjusted to their sickness. And now, instead of trying to change, they're just trying to cope with it. And you fill in the it, whatever it is. Rather than being delivered from it, they're just trying to live with it. Rather than repenting of it, they're trying to keep it secret. Which adds to your wait time for healing, by the way. When we try to conceal our issues, keep it secret, we just add to the wait time. We don't have the courage to step out into the pool or use our elbows to block other people out of the way. You don't have to be totally courteous to get to the pool. If you really want that healing, and you see the suffering of the angels, and you know that it's going to happen in an uncertain time, I'm not going to be so courteous. Now, with, with, some, with some of the old ladies, I'll let you go and I'll read the next time. But with these men, we're going to use some elbows. I'm going to the water. Unless I become conditioned that I really just want to show up and be amongst the sins sin sick people and not really get healed because I don't want to exert that much effort. I'm talking about the Bethesda Church of Christ, not Mabel. One of the first levels of change in our lives happens with our desire. It's our desire. It has to be very strong. It has to be strong enough to overcome complacency. It has to be strong enough to realize that your focus is on the pool, stepping into the pool, and all of the excuses for why you can't get in the pool. But do you not realize that Jesus is standing right next to you? And you don't even realize or recognize that he's there. This man with 38 years of an infirmity wants so badly to get into the pool, but he has all of these impediments, doesn't realize and recognize there's someone greater than the pool standing next to him. Yes. Jesus had to ask him, do we, do you desire to be holy? And we need to ask ourselves, do we desire to be holy? Really to be holy? Do we desire to be right with God? Do we desire to walk in the commandments of the word of God? Or are we comfortable operating, just going through the motion at the Bethesda Church of Christ and not truly being healed? Or is your waiting time over? My sisters and brothers, they would heal side the church, God's family. I think there are a whole lot of congregations out there that ought to be called the Bethesda Church of Christ. Why? Because they're overpopulated with sin-sick folk who really don't have a desire to be truly holy, who don't have a desire to walk in righteousness, but they're glad to be going through the motions of church. There's a difference between knowing we ought to live right and actually hungering after holiness. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between knowing we need to change yeah. and actually thirsting after righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. As a counselor for over 30 years and a Christian for 31 years, I can tell you that one of the deepest strongest demons that we will ever fight is the demon of our own desires. I don't think that most of us don't want to change. I think most of us don't want to do the work that's required. We want change, want change but we don't want to do the work that's required to change. We don't struggle telling others no. We struggle telling ourselves. On, David 
said in Psalms 51 and verse 10, he said, Lord, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. The pool versus Jesus. This man was standing at the pool of Bethesda. Standing next to him was, was Jesus. Don't you think he should rather have had Jesus yeah. develop a close relationship with Jesus or even ask, who are you that you know me? Well, Couldn't he have come to a conversation on, at that time or even ask this man if he would be willing to put him down into the pool? Yeah. It turns out, if you know the story, that he never had to go down into the pool. Right. This was bigger than the pool of Bethesda. Yeah. There's no slight on the pool of Bethesda. There's commonly known um, knowledge back in that day that there were some who got into that water at the right time and got their healing. Right. But they missed the point. When Jesus is on the scene, you don't look for a pool. On, you don't look to congregate with sin sick folk. You look to rise up, have a close relationship with him, and walk in holiness. Thank you, my brother. The pool versus Jesus. This man was contemplating how to get in the pool, Hillside. Yeah. Contemplating how to get in the pool, Maywood. Yeah. Never realizing that the best way to be made well is not to jump in the pool, right. but to draw closer yeah. to the Savior. Yeah. And he's standing right next to us right now. Yeah. We are in the presence of holiness. Yeah. You are in the supernatural realm right yeah. now. Yeah. Supernatural is all around us, up and down these yeah. aisles. Yeah. Yeah. Angels are here. Yeah. Jesus yeah. is here. God is here. Yeah. We are in supernatural yeah. presence. Healing is right yeah. here. We don't need a pool. Yeah. We are in the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. But the true problem is that sometimes we don't recognize yeah. Jesus yeah. for who he is. Yeah. And we don't recognize that we may need to give up some things. Or we don't want to give up some things because we're afraid that it's going to leave a void in us. We're afraid if we stop this addiction, how will we satisfy our needs? If we stop this over here, how will we cope? We're relying on coping mechanisms yeah. and strategies that have taken our focus off of the Lord. Yeah. Do we really want holiness? Do we really believe? Do we have strength in those areas of unbelief? Do we really think Jesus is our healing? Amen. 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 Maybe these people at the Bethesda the Church of Christ thought that healing was found by getting in the pool yes. and not drawing closer to Jesus. Yes. We have got to know Jesus yes. first. Yes. 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 Then he'll add you to the church. Yes. Even for us Christians in today's age, it's not about what church is right or going to the right church, you've got to be introduced to Jesus yeah. first. Yeah. He's the owner of the church. Yeah. And once you develop a close relationship with Jesus, yeah. an intimate relationship with Jesus, he will add you to yeah. this church. You don't have to worry about the church. Get in Jesus. Amen. Develop a close relationship with Jesus. Yeah. He'll direct you to yeah. his body. Amen. He knows it and he can distinguish it from every other entity oh, yeah. or organism out there. Yeah. It's about a close relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And do you not know or know ye not that even with miracles, Jesus does not prefer that you increase your faith by miracles? Oh, yeah. Miracles will give you a sense of wonder and astonishment. And if you believe and obey because of miracles, you saw something. Greater is he who obeys having not seen. If you obey because of God's word, it is a greater reward to you. But the opposite is true also. It is better to have never known the way than to know it and turn away from it. We are condemned even greater when we fail 
to yes. get back on track. Yes. It isn't Amen. just a privilege for us to repent. It is a command. Yes. It is a duty yes. for us to repent yes. and be in right relationship Amen. with God. Amen. That is the healing. Amen. It isn't the pool of Bethesda. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want us to stop going over to John the fifth chapter, but I'm trying to take our focus off of miraculous psychodramatic events like that. Those days have ceased. Yeah. And even with the healing today, with all of our maladies, with cancers, with diseases, with yeah. diabetes, with cholesterol, with uh, all of our filthy habits and eating yeah. nutrition and all of that stuff, if we develop a close relationship yes, with Jesus, he'll bring the healing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 There's healing still today. Still today. It didn't stay in John the fifth chapter at the pool of Bethesda. It's with us right now here at Maywood. And I just dropped by just to tell us and just to encourage us to shift our focus on to Jesus. It's always been Jesus first. I got my my Bethesda touch last Sunday. But you know I did a repeat. I don't mind that the fact that the God is, is Send its angel to trouble the water. I don't mind because I'm waiting for him to do what he does best. And he has, he has given me the touch and I'm, I'm living in it and I'm going to keep on receiving it. Hallelujah. <laughs>